꾸준하여 한권으로 요 500번 읽기 도전하고 있는 테드쌤입니다. 어, 오늘은 가족들과 함께 시간을 많이 보냈습니다. 물론 이제 아이들이 각자의 시간도 보내야 하지만 어, 애지간하면 저희가 같이 많은 시간을 보내려고 했습니다. 그래서 경산에 있는 온천에 가서 모욕도 하고 왔고요. 시내에 있는 어, 큰 녀석이 공부하고 있을 때 작은 아이들만 데리고 어, 작은 아이만 데리고 음, 교보문고에 가서 그 1년 만에 교포란 소리를 들었다. 뭐 기말한 그러니까 아란 TV에 기말한 씨가 쓴 책을 이제 보고 왔습니다. 어, 역시 마찬가지로 어느 영어와 관련된 책을 보더라도 항상 느끼는 게 뭐냐면 어떤 뚜렷한 동기 부여가 있어야 한다. 그러니까 영어는 한국 말이 아니잖아요. 그러니까 우리가 편한 말이 아니다 보니까 어 완전히 그리고 뭐 일본어나 중국처럼 한자어권에 있는 우리랑 어떤 공통된 어떤 흐름이 있는 그런 언어가 아니라 완전히 다른 계열의 언어다 보니까 사실은 어 배우기가 녹록치는 않습니다. 그래서 저도 영어를 배우고 하고 있지만 어, 하면 할수록 쉽지는 않은 것 같아요. 근데 이게 어, 남의 나라 말을 배우기 위해서는 뚜렷한 동기부여가 있어야 하고 그 동기부여를 통해서 어느 일정 수준까지 이제 실력을 성취하게 되면 사실은 이제 다른 언어들에 대한 부분들도 이렇게 욕심이 나기 시작하겠죠. 어, 저도 영어가 점점 더 편해지기 시작하면서는 이제 좀더 뭐라 그래야 되지 높은 데로 올라서고 싶어요 근데 아직까지도 많이 부족하다고 생각을 합니다 그래서 음 지금 도전을 통해서 어 한, 하나의 제 인생에서 하나의 핵을 끊고 싶어요 이제 이제 더 이상 어 어떤 그 단순한 도전이라기 보다는 이제 영어와 관련된 다른 이제 어, 우리 아이들에게 잘 가르칠 수 있는 이제, 어, 내용에 대한 책도 좀 써보고 싶고 그리고 이런 강의들을 어, 많이 해보고 싶고 물론 지금도 이제 제가 어, 조그만 강의들은 하고 있지만 음, 좀 구체적인 강의들도 해보고 싶고 그렇네요 자 가족들과 함께 할수 있는 시간은 행복한 시간입니다 그러면 가족들과 함께 또 즐거운 시간을 어제 오늘 보냈으니까 오늘부터 또 열심히 한번 일상의 생활로 돌아가 보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 버니큘라 빠른 속도로 해서 어제 사실은 이제 동영상을 못 올렸기 때문에 오늘 어제 것까지 해서 두 번에 나누어서 읽어서 어, 최대한 많이 한번 읽어보도록 하겠습니다. Chapter 1 The Arrival I shall never forget the first time I laid these now tired old eyes on our visitor. I had been left home by the family with the admonition to take care of the house until they returned. Uh, <웃음> 입이 잘안 풀립니다. 항상 처음 할땐잘안 풀리네요. 그래도 다시 한번 도전해 보도록 하겠습니다. 음, 입을 좀 풀으, 풀으셔야 해요. 영어 할 때는. <웃음> <웃음> 자, 읽어보도록 하겠습니다. Chapter 1 The Arrival I shall never forget the first time I laid these now tired old eyes on our visitor. I had been left at home by the family with the admonition to take care of the house until they returned. That's something they always That's something they always say to me when they go out. Take care of the house, Harold. You are the watchdog. I think it's their way of making up for not taking me with them, as if I wanted to go anyway. You can't lie down at the movies and still see the screen. And the people think you are being impolite if you fall asleep and start to snore and stretch yourself in public. No, thank you. I'd rather be stretched out on my favorite rug in front of a nice whistling radiator. Uh, but I digress. I was talking about that first night. Well, it was cold, the rain was pelting the windows, 
The wind was howling, and it felt pretty good to be indoors. I was lying on the rug with my head on my paws, just staring absently at the front door. My friend Chester was curled up on the brown velvet armchair, which years ago he had taken out as his own. I saw that once again he had covered the whole seat with his cat hair, and I chuckled to myself, picturing the scene tomorrow next to grasshoppers. There is nothing that frightens Chester more than the vacuum cleaner. In the midst of this reverie, I heard a car pull into the driveway. I didn't even bother to get up and see who it was. I knew it had to be my family, Macdonald Rose. Since it was just about the time for the movie to be over, after a moment, the front door flew open. There they stood in the doorway, Toby and Pete and Mom and Dad, Monroe. There was a flash of lightning, and in its glare, I noticed that Mr. Monroe was carrying a little bundle, a bundle with tiny glistening eyes. Pete and Toby bounded into the room, both talking at the top of their lungs. Toby shouted, "Put him over here, Dad!" Take your boots off, you're soaking wet," replied his mother, somewhat calmly. I thought, under the circumstances. But Mom, what about? First, stop dripping on the carpet. Would somebody, would somebody like to take this? Asked Mr. Mono, indicating the bundle with the eyes. I'd like to remove my coat. I will. Pete yelled. So I will, said Toby. I found him. You will drop him. I will not. You will too. Mom, Pete, Pete punched me. I'll take him," said Mrs. Mono. "Take off your coat this minute." But she became so involved in helping the boys out of their coat that she didn't take him at all. My tranquil evening had, my tranquil evening had been destroyed, and no one had even said hello to me. I whimpered to remind them that I was there. Harold cried, "Toby, guess what happened to me?" And then. All over again, everyone started talking at once. At this point, I feel I must explain something. In our family, everyone treats everyone else with the greater respect for his or her intelligence. That goes for the animals as well as the people. Everything that happens to them is explained to us. It's never been just a good boy, Harold, or you, the little box chatter. At our house, oh no! With us, it's hey, Harold. Dad got a raise, and now we are in a higher tax bracket. Or come sit on the bed, Chester, and watch this Wild Kingdom show. Maybe you will see a relative, which shows you just how thoughtful they are. But after all, Mr. Mono is a college professor, and Mrs. Mono is a lawyer. So we think of it as a rather special household, and we are therefore rather special pets. So it wasn't at all surprising to me that they took the time to explain the strange circumstances surrounding the arrival of the little brother with the glistening eyes now among us. It seems that they had arrived at the theater late, theater late, and rather than trip over the fit of the audience already seated, they decided to sit in the sit in the last row, which was empty. They tiptoed in and sat down very quietly. So they wouldn't disturb anyone. Suddenly, Toby, who is the little one, sprang up from his chair and squealed that he had sat on something. Mr. Mono told him to stop making a fuss and move to another seat. But in an unusual display of independence, Toby said he wanted to see just what it was he had sat on. An usher came over to their row to shush, shush them, and Mr. Mono borrowed his flashlight. What they found on Toby's chair was a little blanket bundle that was now sitting on Mr. Mono's lap. They now unwrapped the blanket, and there in the center was a tiny black and white rabbit sitting in a shoebox filled with dirt. A piece of paper had been tied to his neck with a ribbon. There were words, there were words on the paper, but the Monos were unable to decipher them because they were in a totally unfamiliar language. I moved close for a better look. Now most people might call me a mongrel, but I have some pretty blood, fancy bloodlines just running through these veins. And the Russian wolfhound happens to be one of them, because my family got around a lot. I was able to recognize the language as an obscure dialect of the Fatian mountain region. Roughly translated, it read, "Take good care of my baby." 
but I couldn't tell if it was a note from a believed mother or a piece of a Romanian street music. The little guy was shivering from here and cold. It was decided that Mr. Monroe and the boys would make a horse for him out of an old crate and some heavy duty wire mesh from the garage. For the night, the boys would make a bed for him in the shoebox. Toby and Pete ran outside to find the crate, and Mrs. Monroe went to the kitchen to get him some milk and lettuce. Mr. Murner sat down a dazed expression in his eyes, as if he were wondering how he came to be sitting in his own living room in a wet raincoat with a strange bunny on his wrap. I signaled to Chester, and the two of us casually moved over to a corner of the room. We looked at each other. Well, what do you think? I asked. I don't think rabbits like milk, he answered. Chester and I were unable to continue our conversation because Daphne crash commanded our attention. Pete yelled from the hallway, Ma, Toby broke the rabbit house. I didn't. I just dropped it. Pete won't let me carry it. It's too big. Toby's too little. I'm not. You're too. Okay, fellas. Mrs. Monroe called out as she entered with the milk and lettuce. Let's try to get in here with as little hysteria as possible, please. Chester turned to me and said under his breath, that lettuce looks repulsive, but if there's any milk left, I get it. I certainly was going to argue with him. I'm a waterman myself. At that moment, the crate arrived, barely standing the strain of being pulled in two directions at once. Ma, Toby says he's gonna keep the rabbit in his room. That's not fair. Harold sleeps in his room. Only sometimes, I thought. When I know he's got a leftover ham sandwich in his drawer, Toby's a nice kid, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't hurt that he shared his stash with me. It was, after all, at one of those late night parties in Toby's room that I first developed my taste for chocolate cake, and Toby, noting my preference, has kept me in chocolate cake ever since. Pete, one, on the other hand, doesn't believe in sharing, After the and the only time I tried to sleep, and sleep on his bed, he rolled over on me and pinned me by my ears so that I couldn't move for the rest of the night. I had a crick in my neck for days. But he's mine, Toby said. I found him. You sat on him. You mean, I found him, and he's sleeping in my room. You can keep Smelly All Harold in your room, and Chester too, if you want to, but I'm gonna keep the rabbit in mine. Smelly All Harold, I wouldn't have bitten his ankle. But I knew he hadn't changed his socks for a week. Smelly indeed. Mr. Warner spoke up. I think the best place for the rabbit is right here in the living room on the table by the window. It's right here, and he will get lots of fresh air. Peter's, Peter's taller than I am, Toby cried. He'll be able to see the rabbit better. Too bad, Squirt. Okay, said Mrs. Monroe to cleanse the teeth. Let's put him to bed and make him comfortable. And then we can call, We can all get some sleep. And why? Peter asked. I don't want to go, I don't want to go to sleep. Mrs. Monroe smiled a little too sweetly at Pete. Look, Ma said Toby. He's not drinking his milk. Chester nudged me in the ribs. Didn't I tell you? He asked. Excuse me while I make myself available. Hey, said Toby. We got a name in. Can that wait until tomorrow? Asked Mr. Monroe. The boys shouted in unison. No, he has to have a name right now. I have to say, I agreed with them. It took them three days to name me. And those were the three most anxious days of my life. I couldn't sleep at all. Worrying that they were really going to call me fluffy as Miss, Mrs. Murner had suggested. Well, all right, sighed Mrs. Murner. What about, oh, say, Bun Bun? Uh oh, there she goes again, I thought. Where did she get them? Yuck, we all said. Well, then, how about Fluffy? She offered, hopefully. Peter looked at his mother and smiled. You never give up, do you, Ma? Meanwhile, Chester who had also been named Fluffy for a short time, was rubbing against Mrs. Murner's ankles and purring loudly. No, Chester, not now, she said, pushing him aside. He wants to help us name him, don't you, Chester? Toby asked, as he scooped him up into his arms. Chester shot me a look. I could tell this was not what he had in mind. Come on, Harold, Toby called. You've got to help me with the name, too. I joined the family, and the serious thinking began. We all peeled into the box. It was the first time I had really seen him. So this is a rabbit, I thought. He sort of looks like a Chester, only he's got, he's got longer ears and a shorter tail and a motor in his nose. 
Well, said Pete, after a moment, since we found him at the movies, why don't we call him Mr. Johnson? There was a moment of silence. Who's Mr. Johnson? asked the Toby, the guy who owned the movie theater. Pete answered. No one seemed to like the idea. How about the prince? said Mrs. Monroe. Dad, said Toby. Are you kidding? Well, I had a dog named the prince once, he replied lamely. Prince, I thought that that's a silly name for a dog. We found him at a Dracula movie. Let's call him Dracula, Toby said. That's a stupid name, said Pete. No, it's not. And anyway, I found him, so I should get to name him. Mom, you're not gonna let him name him, are you? That's a favoritism, and I'll be traumatized if we do. Mrs. Munner looked in wonder at Pete. Please, Mom, please, Dad, let's name him Dracula, cried Toby. Please, 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 and with each please, he squeezed the chest a little harder. Mrs. Munner picked up the bowl of milk and moved toward the kitchen. Chester followed he, her every movement with his eyes, which now seemed to be popping out of his head. When she reached the kitchen door, she turned back and said, Let's not have any more argument. We will compromise. He's a bunny, and we found him at a Dracula movie, so we will call him Bunny Killer. Bunny Killer. That should make everybody happy, including me. What about me? muttered the Chester. I won't be happy until she puts down the milk. Well, guys, is that okay with you? she asked. Toby and Pete looked at one another. And then at the rabbit, a smile grew on Toby's face. Yeah, Mom, I think that name is just right. Pete shrugged. It's okay, but I get to feed him. Okay, I'm gonna put the milk, ba milk back in the fridge. Maybe he will drink it tomorrow. What about Chester? Toby said, dropping the frantic cat to the floor. Maybe he would like it. Chester made a beeline for Mrs. Monroe and looked up at her plaintively. Oh, Chester doesn't want any more milk, do you, Chester? You've all had had your milk today. She reached down and patted Chester on his head and walked into the kitchen. Chester didn't move. Okay, that time, said Mr. Monroe. Good night, Bunny Kula, Toby said. Good night, Count Bunny Kula, Pete said sarcastically. In what I took to be his attempt at a Transylvanian accent, I may be wrong, but I thought I saw a flicker of movement from the cage. Good night, Harold. Good night, Chester. I licked the Toby. Good night. Good night, Smelly. Harold. Good night, Don Chester. I drew it on Peter's foot. Mom, Harold drew it on my foot. Good night, Pete, Mrs. Murner said with great finality as she came back into the living room, and then more calmly, Good night, Harold. Good night, Chester. Mr. and Mrs. Murner went up the stairs together. You know, dear, Mr. Murner said, that was very clever, but in the I could never have thought of a name like that. Oh, I don't know, Robert. She smiled as she put her arm through his. I think Prince is a lovely name, too. The room was quiet. Chester was still sitting by the closed kitchen door in a state of shock. Slowly, he turned to me. I wish they had named him Fluffy, was all he said. Uh, 한, 이제, 이렇게 읽었고요. 이, 이제부터는 이제 그 음원을 들으면서 제가 한번 따라 해볼 생각이거든요. 어, 최근 이제 덮어두고 음원으로만 네, 나머지 100번을 채워볼 생각입니다. 그러니까 100번이 될 때까지 채워볼 생각입니다. 한번 도전해 보겠습니다.